Okay, Mihir Vora, Director and Chief Investment Officer, Max Life Insurance is with us. Uh, Mihir, uh, thanks for coming back on. It was, you, you just started responding, we lost the line. Uh, go ahead, uh, you're talking about the market, Mihir. How's it looking? You were saying it's in a consolidation phase. Uh, yes, after the knock that we took in the last couple of months uh, in the local and the global markets, uh, we, we did believe that uh, we were in an oversold uh, territory uh, at that point in time when the market uh, Nifty was trading at about 6,800, etc. Because the fall was just shoot too sharp and uh, quite indiscriminate in certain cases uh, in terms of valuations. So, a uh, couple of things have happened. Uh, locally, we've had a decent budget uh, where Probably the fiscal uh, uh, aim is to stay on the path of uh, prudence. We got a, a good uh, CPI number uh, last uh, last night, uh, which means that there is a good chance that we might see the easing cycle continue. And uh, globally, uh, the fact that commodities have stabilized and the Chinese yuan is now moving in both directions, not only in the direction of weakening, uh, has led to some amount of normalcy as far as risk appetite is concerned. Uh, so we have seen FIIs in India coming back to buy uh, not, not in a massive way, but in the last few days at least that I can see, last 7 to 10 days, we are seeing consistent net inflows in the cash segment. And we are seeing some con uh, short covering also in the, in the F&O segment. So yeah, after the big knock that we took in Jan and Feb, uh, we are coming back to, limping back to normalcy I would say. And now it's back to uh, stock picking and uh, sector allocations. Uh, on earnings, how are we looking, you, you think, uh, Mir? Uh, so in earnings, uh, the, uh, after the after the third quarter numbers, uh, estimates have been downgraded, especially because the uh, because of the sharper than expected write-offs that the PSU banks took. So FY16 earnings now are low single digit or almost zero, and uh, FY17 earnings uh, we have not downgraded uh, that much. So we still expect about 15 plus percent earnings on on a year on a year basis. For 17, is it? For FI70, that's right. Okay. Uh, Mir, uh, I was just talking about uh, Crompton with my colleague earlier. I mean, I'm sure you've looked at the stock over the years. Uh, it's now split into two. How should one look at these kind of situations? Uh, so, Prashant, uh, as you know, I can't uh, comment on, on specific stocks. Uh, but ultimately, when you are looking at a uh, demerger of any kind, you do have to uh, get into the SFTP uh, uh, valuations. Uh, so that's that's all I can say. Uh -huh. Okay, fair enough. That's uh, that's cryptic, <laughs> Mir. But I guess you can't do uh, better, uh, <laughs> at least in terms of specifics. Uh, so. So, what's your what's your focus really, Mehir, in terms of sectors or uh, you know sectoral bets really? Uh, so, you know that we have been positive on on the private sector financials, banks as well as NBFCs, uh, construction companies, uh, railways, uh, those kind of themes. And broadly speaking, uh, even after the budget, uh, we are uh, we are very convinced that these are the uh, bets still to be in. The only mild tweak that we would have done in the last month or so is is in the terms is in the metals uh, space, where we believed that prices had gone down to levels where maybe 30, 40 percent of global capacities in many metals would become unremunerative and there would be production shutdowns. So we are seeing uh, uh, initial signs of uh, production reduction in many many countries like China and Russia in some of the metals. So this is a space that we are now uh, looking at in terms of uh, a space offering us very cheap valuations. Uh, though it won't be a structural call, it probably might be a, a medium term call because uh, valuations have become quite cheap in some of the cases. In, in any one particular commodity or I mean across the board? Uh, it's a, uh, Prashant, the, 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 no, it, it, the massacre has been across the board, uh, not only commodities but even oil as we, as we know. And at these levels, uh, whether you talk about copper, aluminium, uh, zinc, uh, oil, 
a lot of global capacity if the prices were to sustain at the levels that we saw in february would go out of production become unsustainable so obviously the markets uh, have had a self correcting mechanism though we still might see some bankruptcies we still might see a lot of stress in, in at the corporate level globally but uh, as long as we we stick to the most efficient producers some of them uh, which are present in india uh, they might be worth a, worth a look at 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 these levels so that's the only thing which you which you've changed in 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 that sense right absolutely uh, uh, and and of course the the basic view remains the same uh, uh, a slow recovery uh, a path to uh, slow growth recovery in india uh, aided by fiscal policies and as long as global risk conditions remain normal unlike the ones that we saw in jan feb uh, fis should continue to put money into indian equities and fixed income so while we have seen uh, beginning of uh, equities inflows from fis uh, in the fixed income market there are still uh, minor outflows but my guess is that uh, as things stabilize uh, even fixed income should start seeing money into the country mm. right uh, public sector uh, not pri- public sector banks you said you bullish on private sector financials would that also include some of the beaten down corporate uh, uh, you know heavy corporate exposure banks as well which have come off quite a bit i mean without naming names really uh, yes that would include that mm. absolutely yes and that's so what we are using addition or you you continue to hold on to them for a while uh, we uh, we we held on to them uh, in jan and feb we didn't sell because we, we even in december we thought valuations were quite cheap uh, so we took a bit of a knock in jan and feb but we held on and added a bit so we are we're fine right now mm. oil marketing meer Uh, oil marketing we continue to like though not not as much as what what we did li- last year because valuations have have uh, risen so to say uh, but we are still holding on to the positions because uh, uh, the pe's are quite cheap though we may not see massive earnings growth but they are still still cheap uh, not as cheap as they were 6 months back so you'd say we are now more uh, holding on to the positions rather than being uh, very extremely bullish holding on to positions uh fair enough i i, I don't know if you did mention pharma it type of sectors if you didn't I apologize but i didn't hear you talking about those yeah so f- yeah so in pharma we continue to be underweight uh, uh a because we need to put take money up from some sector to be overweight on the other sectors so that's one thing and and there is still a uh, lot of uncertainty regarding the fda's approach and uh, even good companies are receiving uh, notices and inspection uh, reports etc so uh, we, we we that's a st- sector which is frankly very difficult to track and uh, understand so we have a exposure but we are uh, significantly underweight uh, in it uh, we have actually reduced the underweight positions a little bit uh, because we do see that the us growth uh, while there were big concerns it may not be so bad uh, so corporate corporate america is doing okay and we do see that at some point in time when the markets were volatile it was a good hiding place to be in so we reduced the underweight a little bit in the last couple of months meer thanks very much for your time good chatting with you it's a pleasure